What's up? How y'all doing? Welcome to the last panel of Ace Comic Con Midwest. You made it to the end with us. Thank you very much. My name is Karima, AKA The Blurred Girl, and my next guest, oh, forget it. Come on out, Taryn Edgerton. That was a lovely welcome. Thank you very much. Look at this. Look at all this love. It's <laughs> lovely. Thank you. It is. So the last time you were here, actually on an Ace Comic Con stage, you were talking with one of my co-hosts, Anjali Crochet, and I believe the hashtag after that panel was Thick Thighs Save Lives. <laughs> and it's all I, about them weighted squat. Yes, and I just wanted to say welcome Thank you very much. Thank it's, you. It's, it's warm here in Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, <So> everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. So, um, I, I'm a huge Dark Crystal fan, so sorry. This is what I'm starting with. Um, I got a chance to talk to the, the director, Louis Leterrier, and executive producer, Lisa Henson, and they both said how impressed they were at, you know, they thought they were gonna sort of have to explain the world to you a little bit, and you rolled in there like, yeah, so what's good? What am I playing? Yeah, no, I felt, <laughs> I think um, it had been just a, one of those movies that I'd watched over and over again as a child, and, um, and yeah, it's the only thing I've ever agreed to do without reading the script. Really? So, yeah, I just thought, God, what an amazing thing to be a part of. You could of. have been a muddly little podling and you would have done it. I mean, I wouldn't have done it if I was a podling, obviously. <laughs> a man has standards. <laughs> <laughs> what did it mean to you, though, to play Rian? I think, you know, uh, Jim Henson and that legacy is such a, an important part of popular culture that I think, like everyone else who was involved with it, it was just such a thrill to feel like you're part of that bit of history, really. Film history, you know, it ties in with the Muppets, and, you know, Labyrinth was a big thing for me when I was a kid as well. And, and then also working with one of his daughters. Say that again, sorry? Also working with one of his daughters. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Lisa was, um, you know, gave the whole thing a real sort of stamp of authenticity. Yeah, definitely. And none of it scared you as a child? like the Yeah, no, 100%. Okay, I'm terrified. I'm yeah, the yeah, the, the Chamberlain is, is scary. Yes. Ah, it's horrible. Did you see the Chamberlain cosplayer walking around? He was fabulous. I don't know if any of y'all saw him. I did not, him. no. He spent, there was a Chamberlain Skeksis, Skeksis cosplayer. Why didn't amazing. the Chamberlain come and say hello to me? That would have been good. Anyway, I, will never mind. Show you, I will show you a picture. He's fantastic. Um, is it true, and I find this fascinating, because normally in animation, they record all the audio first, and then they animate to that sometimes. But it looked like all of the puppetry and things like that was done first and it was almost like you were Yeah, you so you match to, to their to rhythm. Say, yeah. Interesting. So the so you go in and they have a, obviously the puppeteers performance, which is a really specialized, highly skilled thing in itself. But they have their voice there as a placeholder. So to a certain extent, you're kind of matching their rhythm. When you do animation, they animate to your voice. So they're more inspired by your performance, whereas this is more of a collaboration. The physical It's almost like ADR, almost. Yeah, exactly, it's more like ADR, yeah. But um, I really enjoyed it, and it's quite, it's sort of a, it's quite humbling, really, because you're, you really then only feel like one small part of the crafting of the whole thing, rather than, um, you know, feeling like you're center stage, which you do often feel as an actor. So it's quite, it's good for your, keeps your ego in check. <laughs> but what was your reaction the first time you saw Rian, the puppet Rian, on screen when they first showed him to you and you had to... I loved him. I mean, I thought he looked quite androgynous. I thought he could have done with a little bit of stubble or something, but that's probably my own insecurity because my stubble is rubbish. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, we don't have uh, any problem with this double, right? No, okay, I, um, I'm just checking. I thought he was great. I thought he looked amazingly authentic um, and very much in the spirit of the original film, as I think the whole series is. What was your favorite scene? 
I think the one, I mean, I, I don't want to ruin it. There's a scene. Y'all haven't seen Dark Crystal yet? You haven't watched all of it? If you haven't, you're late. Yeah, no, there's a scene, there's quite an emotional scene about halfway through the series. Okay, I won't ruin it. There's an emotional scene halfway through the series where a character dies, and that character is played by an actor who I have worked with a lot before, and I think that's quite an emotional bit. So you'll have to figure that out, because if I just tell you who it is, I'll ruin that bit of the show. Now you're ruining my next question. I wanted to know what it was like working with that actor. Oh, uh, right, you'll have to skip that question then. Damn it, Jim. Okay. Um, <laughs> but of all of the other characters that were not yours, when you actually finally saw the whole thing, you know, what did you, what did you think? Did you think it was too long, too short? Did you think it was perfect? No, I thought it was good. I think the thing about something like the original film is that it's such a microcosmic look at that world that I think fans wanted that um, to feast, really, on, 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 a, on a far broader look at the universe of it. So in that respect, I thought it was great. Um, it's different tonally, you know, it's a different director, it's a different team, so it's gonna have a slightly different feel. And I think, uh, but I think they, I think in, in large part, it was a great triumph, yeah. It was, I wasn't ready, I, I was not ready for that kiss. I was like, I'm sorry, am I, <laughs> am I watching Puppets Kissing? Yeah, Is that yeah, what's yeah, happening yeah. right now? <laughs> it was hot, right? It was, it was. Only because I knew there was your stubble underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, of, what are you um, most proud of? Because you've worked on some amazing stuff this year. And when I look at things like Rocket Man and <laughs> Kingsman, mm -hmm. and this is what we do here. <laughs> <laughs> And Dark Thank Crystal you. again. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what do you think when you sit back and look at, you know, your last few years of work, what are you most proud of? I, I don't think about, about it in terms of being most proud of one thing. You know, as events like Ace prove, you know, the certain, um, certain movies, certain shows, they mean a great deal to different people in different ways. So, you know, you, don't, you never want to be sort of, prescriptive about what you enjoy most, there are things that I'm proud of for different reasons, you know, and Kingsman appeals quite often to, to, to different people than Rocketman would, but that's part of the joy of it, and one of the things that I really love about my job is that it allows me to do different things if I choose to pick different things, and I find that very exciting, which is why I try and pick roles that feel different from one another. That's what I try and do, anyway. Well, you picked well with, right, yeah, see? <laughs> Don't, don't do that, Taryn. <laughs> Is everyone listening? <laughs> That's my thigh, it makes that noise. <laughs> that really isn't fair. Okay. <laughs> so Rocket Man, you did pick well. Thank you. You yeah. picked Im incredibly yeah, well. You. And you did such an incredible job that I, by the end of the movie, I forgot. I, I, I couldn't tell the difference between Thank you and you. Elton. And he, he lost himself in that role, right? He was incredible. What was it, and I know everybody asked you what was it like working with this icon, but I want to go back to the beginning when you first landed the role. Yeah. What was that reaction? And knowing that he was going to be producing. I mean, I think it felt like um, a, a really pivotal moment in my life. It was weird because, you know, anyone who knows my work and knows a, a bit about me is that, you know, th there have been instances in my life that have brought me and Elton together before. So, Kingsman, Sing. For, uh, I mean, I, I sang, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, uh, I sang your song for my first uh, audition for RADA and you know it's been there a lot a, he's been there a lot at different moments so weirdly I'm not a great believer in fate but that did feel like it um, and of course it was daunting and of course it felt like you know if I messed it up it, people would be really upset but you know mainly I just felt really excited and felt like I had to really 
that I felt like it was something that completely demanded I, I lose myself in it. So thank you for saying that because that's what it felt like. It felt like I lost myself in it, and um, and it was a, it was a it was immensely hard work, but it was you know a wonderful experience for me. And your hairline looks fabulous again now. So that thank you. I know you were worried about that. Thank you very much. <laughs> fabulous might be putting it strongly, but it's good enough for me. <laughs> What was the scene that worried you the most about while shooting in that in um, Rocket Man? Wow, that's a really interesting question. None of it worried me. I think the thing about the movie is because it happens over a period of decades, every scene is super important. You know, it's not like, you know, it never felt like there was a day where you could sort of relax or not be on your A game. But I think the scenes which we shot as a block that I really knew had to be great because there's so much of the movie the scenes in the rehab center where he's recounting his life and telling everyone at first he's very defensive and aggressive but eventually you know these layers peel away and he removes this costume and he starts to open up and that, those scenes I really felt like I had to be on it um, but you know you feel that about everything really yeah I think you I think if you don't feel like that you're in trouble and I think it's interesting, too, because a lot of people want to call it a biopic, but it's not... It's weirder than that, I think. It's yeah. sort of, you know, it's, um, it is, of course, a biopic of sorts, but it's a musical, it's a fantasy, it's, you know... Uh, I don't know, it's weird, isn't it? It's a weird film. It's, it's a good, amazing, good weird, though. I it think. is a good but, weird. You know, but it's, it's, we it like is. weird here, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, and Fives. Anyway, so you've said... <laughs> Now, you just talked about how you sang your song as an audition, but you mm. also sang it live on set as opposed to in the studio when you were yeah, shooting, Yeah, so right? there are bits in the movie where it's me just singing on set, and I think it felt like that was important to me. It felt um, expressive in a, in a kind of authentic way, and, um, you know, where possible, I really wanted to do that, and one of the scenes where there was really no reason not to was your song, so that is all captured live on set, yeah. And what was it, th that feeling like? Because everybody I know who's ever been to Cannes has been like, oh my God, it's so stuffy, it's so like, ooh. Yeah, that wasn't and my experience And then you walk in there and blow everybody away and <laughs> standing ovation and people are taking off their clothes. I'm kidding. So, <laughs> <laughs> only you and Elton. <laughs> <laughs> Who have you been talking to? <laughs> How, but how did it feel? How did it feel being yeah, there amazing. with him? It felt like a wonderful bit of synchronicity, you know, because with the I'm Still Standing video, Elton's got this rich history there, and, um, and it's got this kind of sense of prestige and, I suppose, glamour as well. It felt very exciting. And, you know, it was a shame Jamie Bell couldn't be there, but everyone else was, pretty much. Matthew Vaughan couldn't be there, but myself, Richard, Dexter, and, you know, we all had this incredible... <laughs> Yeah, and I brought my whole family with me and my friends and my wonderful girlfriend and everyone. It was really, we had a really great time. Yeah. Now, you, you took something from the Rocket Man set, but then you gave it away? Is that right? The, the glasses. The glasses. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. So that's right. So the glasses from your song, I always really loved them. And um, it was a scene that I loved shooting. And I felt that it would be a nice thing to keep. But I remember earlier this year, it was Elton's 72nd birthday, and I didn't know what, it's like, what on earth do you get Elton John for his birthday? You know, the, the guy just presumably just buys whatever he needs. Um, so uh, I did, I took, I, I didn't take them. I asked Paramount and the production if I could it's have okay, them. It's okay, you took them, it's fine. We won't tell. I stole them. <laughs> and, um, and I had his reading prescription put in them. And then oh. I gave them to him to use as reading glasses. And if you watch the making of the video for I'm Gonna Love Me Again, he's wearing them and it is so cute. Oh. And he, he's, he's wearing them to read the lyrics. And I, occasionally I see him and he's, he's wearing them reading or doing a crossword or something. That's amazing. Yeah. There was also a jacket you were trying to get your hands on. I got that, yeah, you yeah, did. yeah. The, the tiny dancer the jacket. The tiny dancer yeah. jacket. Yeah. Okay, good. Because there were some people here who were gonna try and, you know. I've seen some. some Really good replications of that. Yes. There's some amazing duplicates. Yeah, there you go. Case yes, in there you go, right there. <laughs> See, look, and now she's passed out. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to us about Richard Madden a little bit. Yeah. 
Now it's funny. I mean, I, he did an amazing job in the movie, but I'm I'm sorry, but y'all killed it on Carpool Karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> We had a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, sometimes, sometimes you meet people, and Richard and I had sort of, we'd seen each other once at the, at the Savoy, which is a restaurant in London, not the Savoy, the Wolseley, and, um, and we'd sort of gone, you know, from across the restaurant, and people had been saying to us for years, oh, you two would get on. And I was like, well, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then we met and we just became firm friends very, very quickly. And he's a brilliant guy. Um, he's about to take over the world with the Eternals, isn't it? Um, and, you know, he, uh, he and I just really hit it off and we're still very good friends. And we've, you know, remained friends after shooting and, you know, text each other a lot. And he's, uh, he's a wonderful, wonderful person. And uh, I think. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of him in the future. So uh, he's about he's about exactly to do very well. Exactly. Now, so, so it, it but that's it. Really looks like you lot are besties. Like it really. Looks yeah. Like I mean, it happens sometimes. I mean, I think you can you can feel it. Like you know, you can tell that Tom and Jake really love each other. You know, like after. And I think sometimes you can just tell that people make. Yeah, but they didn't make out. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't we we, we don't do that often. I know. I'm just <laughs> uh, um, uh, but um, yeah, you know, sometimes you just—it's very rare that you have negative experiences with people on set. Most people are lovely, but you know, I think Richard and I just, uh, you know, became really good friends really quickly, and, and it's one of those one of those things. It's lovely. It's a lovely thing. Now, would you ever do, because every time I watch the movie, I've seen recommend several times, um, I think it's a musical in the making. I can see it on Broadway. Oh, like on I stage. can see it yeah. on stage. Uh, would you ever, would you ever I do it again on stage? I, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like, you know, sometimes when you've done something and, I, and you're really proud of it, it's like, I wouldn't want to, I don't want to mess with it. Do you know what I mean? It's like if I, it's like, it's kind of like trying to, it was a wonderful time in my life, Rocket Man, and I'm so proud of it, and I'm so proud of everything about it, but to try and relive it, I think might be a, f a folly. Do you know what I mean? I just think I, I would hate to do anything to, to, to take the shine off it. It's a, been a great experience, but if I'm greedy and I try and get more from it, I might, I might ruin it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you see, if they put it on Broadway and you go, you're gonna just pick it apart. Like, he yeah, didn't I don't know about right? I he mean, if they did it, I would be there at press night. But I don't know if I'd be the guy in the in the, in the booth? platform boots. No. <laughs> um, now, what was more challenging for you, the underwater scenes in Rocket Man, or uh, your underwater scenes in actually all of the other movies that you've done, <laughs> including Dark Crystal. Yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> was, Something was, about me obviously just says, dunk me underwater. <laughs> was Rian's underwater scene hard for you? They demanded I do that soaking wet. No, they didn't really. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, the one, they're all challenging, but they're kind of fun as well. They're challenging in a good way. But the one in Rocket Man was hard because the character is at a really, I mean, a really crap time, and um, and also I have to be on my. I'm I'm at least 20 meters down there, so if you panic and you have to get to the surface, you can't just go up to the surface because if you go up too quickly you don't have time for the pressure to equalize and you can really mess up your eardrums and stuff and get, you know, all sorts of horrible things. Yeah, like the bends or something. The bends, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if it's quite deep enough for the bends, but nearly. And then, um, but also when I was at the bottom of that pool, I had to float onto my back. And when you get home later on, just, if you get in the bath, try, just lie on your back underwater w without holding your nose and you'll get a nasty shock because all the water rushes up your nose. Okay, so we're not telling anybody okay. to get okay. in yes. the tub yes. no. and go disclaimer, underwater. Disclaimer, neither Taron Edgerton nor Ace Convention no. or Karama condone <laughs> any sort of experimentation in the bath. It's my first, it's my first Ace in this man uh, trying to yeah, get yeah. me fired. No, 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 no. Thank you. Very, very wise. <laughs> very wise indeed. Okay, do you get that? 
Don't do this at home. Do not try this in home. Okay. When I did Especially it. Especially you. Don't. <laughs> Seriously, don't do it. The point is that all the, all the water rushes up your nose. So there's a very, there's a very, you, but you don't need to try that. <laughs> um, but uh, you, you basically, there's a, there's a very specific angle you have to hit. And if you go back too far, it all rushes up your nose. Which no one's going it, to which try. Which no one is but going thank to try. You for describing it. Okay. I need some nods of the head here, people. <laughs> thank you. Great. There you go. Yes, like when you're in the exit row, yeah. I, need a, I need a firm yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Moving swiftly on from that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> now, um, Kingsman. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Now we know the next, <laughs> the next movie is a prequel. It is a prequel, The King's Man. Yeah. Yes, and we're going to see um, where Eggsy got his, the, where Eggsy's beginnings came from, um, sort of, like basically yeah. the the origins of the organization. Now, but you've mentioned that we will possibly be getting more Eggsy after that. Yeah. I think. Can you, can you share any details on that? Um, Without trying to kill anybody in the audience, please? Pro probably not. The thing about Kingsman is the guns, right? The gun. No, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Um, no, um, I. Uh, so when you go home. No, I'm only joking. No, no, no. Uh, so does, I mean, it I, up, does it pick up right after Kingsman 2? Uh. I'm really not allowed to say anything, no. but I mean, there is there is a script, and um, it's a really neat idea. But you are coming back as Eggsy. The plan at the moment is that we'll do another one. I okay. think that's what we'd like to do. Okay, good. Yeah, one more, one more time. But what is what is your favorite part about playing him? Because to us, you are Eggsy. We can't yeah, see anybody else. Yeah, I mean, it was the, it was the role that kind of started my film career. So I'm always going to feel you know, very, I have a great fondness for the part, and I want to, I would like to do one more, because I want, frankly, I'd like to say goodbye to him in a, in a befitting way, and finish the trilogy, yeah, I think, you know, everything, well, all good things come to an end. Don't kill him. No, I don't think we'll <laughs> kill him, just, you know, it's, it was always imagined as a trilogy, mm -hmm. and I think it would be great to finish the story off, because I, I've loved playing the character. Okay, so we're going to go into safer waters for you. Uh, didn't mean water. Safer territory. Safer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, many people have talked about you playing different roles in the MCU. <laughs> and a particular writer said that you might play one Logan, or that you would be wonderful as Logan. I know well, you have not been cast as that, but what do you think about all this? Um, I think that, uh, I, abs I love those films, and um, I've got lots of friends who play roles in those films, and they love it, and they have a great time. Uh, I think so Richard could get you in. Tell Richard to say a good word. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think the Logan thing is really interesting. I mean, I feel like I I'm slightly baffled by it. I don't, I've never felt like a Wolverine sort of guy. You know what it is? You look more like the Wolverine in the comics. That's what yeah, people maybe, are latching on to. I don't know. Maybe. You're not Canadian, I think but that, I think that one's. I think that one's a few years away. I know mm -hmm. that. I know that Kevin has spoken publicly about that being a few years away, and who knows? Maybe in a few years, I'll look rough enough for it. But oh. I mean, I. Um, but I. Uh, uh, but what about I've, I've made no. I've made no secret of the fact that I'm a fan of those films, and I would. Yeah, of course I would. I'd love to be a part of them. Are there any other characters that you? There's no them. way I would tell you any of the characters that I'm interested in playing because if I did, I would jinx it. But yes, there are. I don't think, but I don't think it would jinx it because you, because you sang an Elton John song, and then you know auditioned with one, and then you oh, sang one in another movie. Oh, you're naughty. You're <laughs> naughty. Um, and then you got like the most amazing thing. You know, you got an Elton John movie, so you can tell me. I won't tell anybody else. <laughs> okay. I personally think, I'm gonna tell you some of mine. I think you'd make a good Adam Warlock. Don't you, you've gotta be like a, you've gotta be like a specimen of a human being. You've gotta be like a Hemsworth for that. Uh, who knows, who knows, who knows, who knows. 
Who knows? Um, but are you a fan of the comics? The, not necessarily the movies, but do you, do you read the comics? When I was a kid, it, I grew up in rural Wales, so we, don't, we, we didn't have comic book shops. <laughs> we you know, didn't it's have not comics, we had tea. Yeah, we, we had, <laughs> had like sheep and stuff. Um, <laughs> but I have read a few like compilations over the years, and I, med, I read Mark Millar's Fantastic Four and things, and I've got the House of X and the Power of X at home waiting to be go. read, which is the new ones. Is, aren't they amazing? I haven't read them yet. I'm finishing off a book called A Little Life, which I'm enjoying very much. But oh, I'm, wonderful. Uh, one person, that was very good. Was one <laughs> person. Um, but I intend to read them when I get home. But um, I love the world of it. I love the fantasy of it. I love the escapism of it. And, you know, you know so does the rest of the world. I mean, these conventions are largely powered by Marvel, you know, and the, those, those, those mythologies, those laws, it's, they, they're wonderful. Well, I'm going to make a prediction that in the next five years, you will be in a Marvel film. Well, who knows? Who knows? And, and then I want a percentage for making the <laughs> prediction. <laughs> Is there a director that you would love to work with? I mean, so many. Yeah, of course. Um, of course. It l l Colonel Springs. I love Edgar Wright, actually, the British director, yeah. Um, and he's a friend of mine. Hasn't asked me to be in a film, but never mind. Um, but I love him. He's the person <laughs> who springs to mind immediately, yeah. What about, besides Richard, other actors that you'd love to collaborate with? Uh, I mean, there's loads. Um, uh, oh God, there's loads. I mean, Joaquin Phoenix, I think he's amazing. Have you seen Joker? I have seen Joker. That was like a phenomenal performance though, right? It's an astonishing performance, yeah. It's amazing. He's like, and uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because he transforms into that role, even though the Joker isn't real, the way I feel like you melted into Elton. Well, that's very, very kind of you. I mean, he's a lovely man and Actually, he reached out to me after Rocket Man, and, he, and I met him recently. And he's a wonderful, wonderful person and a great actor. And I thought his performance in that movie was sort of, I mean, scarily believable. I found it quite, I find it hard to watch, actually. But I, oh, yeah, no, yeah. it's disturbing, but yeah. it's sort of like you can't look away. You can't look away. It's amazing. It's an amazing performance. Yeah. And um, what about other, would you adapt anything else that you're reading? Is there anything else that you've read that you've been like, oh my God, I would that's love really, if this was a movie? That's a really interesting question. Um, I, 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 mm, okay, uh, I need you to not sound like a skexy when you're thinking. <laughs> of uh, do you know, I can't think of anything that immediately springs to mind, but um, there, is, there are things I'd like to see, not necessarily that I would be... Not necessarily that I'd be in, but there are things I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. um, I like, do you know, there's a writer called Haruki Murakami who writes mm -hmm. amazing, yes. but yeah, maybe some of his things. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, look yeah. at that. I, he, just, he just hit me with something, okay. Huh. <laughs> so we're going to dive into some fan questions. Okay. Next. You guys ready? Uh, Maria Zhao, MGM says, did you or did you not sneak into a theater to see Rocket Man in a regular movie session with a regular audience? And if yes, how was it? Uh, I did do that. I did that uh, in my... <laughs> I did it in my hometown. <laughs> I, I, I asked someone to be quiet, actually. <laughs> you were that guy. <laughs> well, my, fa my, my father was with me and he hadn't seen it. And uh, someone was chatting, and I said, oh, I'm sorry, do you mind if we keep it down? Because I'm him, and my... Uh, did you say that? And this is my dad. Did you say that, really? I, I did. Mean, yeah, well, I did, yeah. And did they faint? What happened? I think there's etiquette in, in cinemas. It's mm -hmm. about shared experience, but you want to get lost in the world, and I think it's nice to uh, just use your better judgment. I mean, what like it's awesome when people have a vocal reaction to things. I'm not saying like everyone should be quiet and fussy all the time, but if it's like a really emotional, quiet scene, you should... You shouldn't be like chatting because it compromises your experience. It pulls people out. That is my, that's my opinion. Okay, so don't. <clears throat> I agree with you, but don't don't ever come to Brooklyn, New York, and watch a movie. I'm just saying because we yell at the screen. Oh. Um. But I mean, it's it's nice at the right time. I think, like you know, 
like I went to see Endgame in the theatre, and when and when and when Chris caught the hammer, everyone went no, and it was amazing. Yes. You know, it was like proper. It was a theatrical experience. So I don't mean all the time, but just at the right moment, isn't it? Um, Tiny Moonstar asks, what are the first and last Rocket Man scenes you shot? And oh, how, wow. And how many times did you have to fall in the pool? Fall in the pool. Uh, I, do you know, so the shot, that we, the, the pool in the pool, we got it first time. So it's one long tracking shot where I come out of the house. I think they cut into it in the end, but I come out of the house, I walk alongside the pool, and I go up and I say something like I'm, I can't remember what I say, but I fall in the pool and, um, and, and the camera dunks underwater and it worked so well first time that we only did it once. But that's just sometimes you get lucky. Um, well, you got very lucky because the, the baseball scene, you hit, you hit the baseball every time. Uh, yeah, I did, I did. <laughs> Mr. I don't believe in fate. Yep. I don't uh, believe in luck. <laughs> um, and uh, what did we film first? We filmed the troubadour stuff first. So the bit where I walk in okay. um, uh, and... And float. The, and all of the floating stuff. They were the first two days. And the bit where I have a strop backstage. And then the last thing we shot... Uh, the last, the very last thing I shot is June in the bit in Rocket Man where I fly up into Starship One at the end, and there's a shot where you're looking down at me flying through the air and there's all wind blowing in my face. That was the last thing I shot. Wow. And the, and those are two like iconic moments. I, yeah, I, we, although I do yeah. really, really love the bathroom scene where he had a fit. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's very upset. Yeah. It was adorable. <laughs> now, um, if you could, oh, Simply Taryn, this is a fan asks, if you could turn back time... That's the name of my fragrance, in case anyone... Uh, okay. It's available in 2020. Simply Taron. Patent, patent pending. <laughs> um, if you could turn back time and audition for a movie that's already been released now, which one would it be and why? Um... I'm, I'm noticing something. He sings when he thinks. Have you noticed this? Uh, uh, what would I like to be a part of that has already come out? Yeah. Oh, come on, Taryn. Am I, do I have a time machine? You, yes. You, you can have whatever you want, honey. This is it. Star Wars. First Star Wars. 100%. Oh. Yeah, definitely. Speaking of singing, have you ever thought of doing an album of your own? Have I ever thought of doing what? An album of your own, of original no, music? Uh, well, um, no, and I haven't because I don't play an instrument properly. So I don't really feel like I could write music. And I'm not sure that I'm someone, I don't know, never say never, but I'm still figuring out acting. And at I'm some point- I'm thinking if you asked Elton, he may write you something. <laughs> I'm sorry, or actually the team of <laughs> Elton. Maybe, he would, he would, maybe. I think he might write you We'll too, see, I we'll see. Maybe one day, maybe one day. <laughs> now, uh, is there, you, you've done so much. You're still so young and you've done so much. Uh, um, what are yeah. you thinking? When you think of the future and what you want to do next, what, is it daunting or is it exciting for you? I... Uh, I sort of still feel like I still feel I still I still have dreams where I think where it's where I I have dreams where I wake up and my life isn't real and that I'm not oh, like you're in an alternate universe and that yeah was that I'm not an actor and that I dreamt it and then it's not real I dream that r it's a regular thing I have and it's never like a nightmare it's just like ah oh, bummer I'm not really an actor you know um, uh, so. All I really want is just for my life as it has become to carry on. I'm happy with the level I'm at, you know. I, I don't need to be, you know, Harry Styles or whatever, right? you know. I just, you know, I, I just want to work. I want to make work I'm proud of, and I want to keep doing it. And I love the fact that I've been lucky enough to do different things. So I, you know, I've done the spy films and Eddie the Eagle, and I've done a musical, and you know, like. 
but you don't, that's really sweet. You don't have to do that every time I give it. But like, I, do, I love the variety of it. I love being creative and that's all I want out of life really, to keep doing that. Yeah. And you, on top of everything else, you even have, I, I think that the, the breadth of work also that you work on is fantastic. Like you said, like you've lost yourself before in, in, you. in things, but then you also have like Sing. We have another Sing coming out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, do you like animation? Do you like I do. I've always loved animation. I've loved animation since I was very small. And like a lot of people, I guess. But I, you know, I love the, I love that. There's a, there's a real magic, I think, to watching something like that come together and a world created where every single thing has been engineered and designed and nothing happens by chance. I, that attention to detail and that specificity, I think, is very inspiring. And, um, and I love being a part of that. I can't tell you the feeling of the first time you see your character in something, where you see your, um, you know, the, 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 the animal or the character you're playing drawn for the first time is such a thrill. 